I've shown that those people who've been through the course have got those kinds of skills. Um, this one is an example. Um, so in the UK, we have a new computing curriculum because um, it's recognised that there is a skills gap in terms of web skills and so on. Um, so there is a new computing curriculum. Um, and this is a course that um, UEA have produced to help teachers who now have to teach it uh, giving them the skills in order to do so. And there's a lot of teachers in the UK who are really worried about this because they, they haven't learned computing um, from a, a young age. Um, the organisation at the top there, Computing at School, is tasked with ensuring that teachers have these skills. And BT, on the right there, uh, are um, obviously very interested in their kind of new workforce that is coming up, um, having very kind of good kind of computer science kind of knowledge and so on. Um, and so they're doing as much as they can to support this curriculum and how the, the, this knowledge is in schools. So they uh, provided quite a lot of money towards supporting this course. Um, um, this is a brief clip where... So myself and BT are delighted about the new computing curriculum because it establishes computing, comp science, right up there alongside the other STEM subjects, physics, chemistry, maths, etc. And I think that sends a really important message. It's a subject which is as core to the sort of skills that employers will need in the future as those other really important subjects. Another element of the curriculum that we're really keen on is digital citizenship. In an increasingly connected digital world where information is potentially spreading all over the place, I think it's very important that right from the offset, children think beforehand about the way they interact and the data that they will be putting out online. So Helena, who was the project lead on this, um, felt that they had to include BT in the course uh, because they'd given them lots of money and was worried a little bit about how overt the plug might be. But actually, uh, this clip where you've got somebody from BT saying how important it is and some of these different things actually went really down really well with that community of teachers and some of whom are in the discussion forum saying I'd like to be able to show this uh, video in class because actually this shows why these skills are really important to you getting a job and so on. Um, so I think that shows a really nice synergy that actually, although sometimes um, uh, we can worry about how uh, sort of the, the kind of corporate angle of things can sort of um, take away from some of the, uh, the academic sort of uh, credibility of things, actually it can often bring a really interesting angle on it. Um, and we've also seen in various bits of research that we've done that, that learners themselves, if a certificate or something like that is rec re recognised by a corporate, not just an industry body, but just simply got a corporate on there, they think that it's much more worth having because obviously somebody in the industry thinks it's worth having. Um, Here's another one. So this was the very first course we ran, um, which we've now run several times since, uh, but it was a course on branding that was um, run in association with Wolfolians, who are a big branding agency in London. They did the London 2012 uh, branding, but they've also worked with people like Skype and General Electric and all sorts of people. Um, and so I think this course is a nice, interesting blend of the kind of academic rigor that, that UEA, again, this one was UEA, uh, brought to it, but it also had the real-world expertise of the agency, so how does this actually work in business and in, in uh, that environment? Um, and then they also brought to it their contact book, so it also had lots of really interesting interviews from people from Google and AOL and Oxfam and so on to talk about sort of what branding means to their business. Um, here's a little clip of um, something that, the, that Wolf Olin's used as one of their sort of key branding tools, and this is uh, Robert Jones, who's a visiting lecturer at the UEA, but he also um, is quite senior at Wolf Olin's. At Wolf Olin's, how do we help clients think about the idea that they want to stand for? What, what, what the brand is going to be all about? Well, we have actually a very simple diagram, which we tend to call the butterfly diagram, which helps us and clients think that through, and I'll just explain it to you now. Um, it consists of two circles uh, that overlap. So there's the first one. And the first one is about the outside world. And the second one is about the inside world of you, the client. And our belief is that a really strong brand idea, whether it's proposition or personality um, or purpose, 
lies at the intersection of those two circles. What are the circles about? I mean, well, the top the one. But he had the idea. So he's, he's showing one of the tricks of the trade. Um, so these are the, the clip that I showed at the beginning. Um, there was four courses that were produced by the BBC. So in the, the previous examples that I've shown, often it's been the university institution that has brought the partnership together. Um, with these ones, it was the fact that FutureLearn can act as a broker um, where we work with organisations that say, we've got this idea, um, uh, how do we kind of make it happen? And so this is where we got four courses that make a kind of suite that you can uh, learn together, all the uh, commemorating the centenary of the First World War, um, which was something that the BBC were doing a big season on in the UK. Next year, they're doing a season on digital creativity. Um, and so what we're planning to do is something much bigger in terms of the partnership around how do we get people doing digital creativity, which obviously, again, is part of this kind of how do we fill the skills gap. There's a, there's a theme developing. Um, we've also got a whole bunch of other interesting partnerships lined up that we're <coughs> going to announce soon. Um, something that's not yet announced, so please don't tweet this, but we're working with the British Film Institute who are partnering with the National Film and Television School on a, on a course about filmmaking skills. So I think, again, that shows how these kind of partnerships can work in practice. Um, in terms of recognition, this one's really important. So this is a, a course that if you... Um, we run exams on certain courses after you've done the course online, you can take a, an exam in a, in a physical test centre. And this one, um, if you take the exam and you pass it, it's recognised by the ACCA, which is the accounting professional body, and the seven exams that you need to take in order to get an accountancy diploma, and this gets you one of those seven. So we need six more, and you can get an accounting diploma in the future. Mm -hmm. um, but that's again where we're like working quite hard to find those professional bodies who are going to recognise these institutions. So um, the vision that I'm going to finish with, because um, I think I'm probably beginning to get over time. <laughs> There's nodding going on here. So it's basically, it's to create a virtual tech learning hub. So going back to that idea of like how creating physical hubs and so on, actually how, how about we create one that's online um, around learning. And like if you could bring together someone like UEA with the kind of uh, academic expertise with that Mind the Product conference that I showed you where they've got a massive archive of brilliant talks from other people who do product management with people like Sky and Tesco's who actually uh, sponsored that event because they're really interested in hiring product managers and in injecting a sort of product culture into their organisations. That would make an awesome product management course that someone like me would be really interested in. And that, that's not a million miles away from us being able to do. The other thing is that those brands there might bring some credibility to actually, and real world problems, to it that then learners uh, who are on that course might then kind of uh, feel that that course is recognised more. So the idea is um, that we could bring together institutions who specialise in teaching, organisations who are interested in fostering innovation and filling skills gaps, with people who can provide recognition, so potentially professional bodies but others as well, with companies who are interested in recruitment and upskilling their own employees and sharing experience and probably, really importantly, have money um, with interesting content providers, which then you can create a community around uh, where you've got active and aspiring learners. And I think that's a really interesting point as well. That if you have pe people who are professionally active and sharing their knowledge with people who want to, then you've got that kind of aspirational thing there. Then we can create this really interesting, rich social network that can really help fill these skills. So that's it. So we've begun creating the platform and the ecosystem, um, and now we're looking for organisations who can help us make this vision a reality. So anything you can do, we invite you to join us. Thank you very much.